So we're going to talk a little bit briefly about the theme of iWire Monday. Well, the themes of iWire Monday. So on iWire Monday, Mon- can I, I can't even say that. iWire Wire, Wire Pulse Monday. I got Coca-Cola. I'm going to take a sip of Coca-Cola. Did you, are a, you, is this your 12th Coca-Cola today? This is not. I have not had any po- Popa. <laughs> I don't know. My my mouth is apparently, like I ain't cooperating with you too. Apparently, you, you think it. Trump, I don't say it. <laughs> you and Trump have a few things in common. Wow, Coca Cola and dry every mouth. Slur our speech right now. That's yes. right. And I just want to let you guys know I don't have dementia. Okay, I don't think he does either. I think that's a vicious rumor, of course. But if I was a political person, but they would you, say right now that I have. Did dementia. you ask? Did you ask a girl for her phone number 25 years ago? Because that's probably that's assault. That's I probably assault. did. I probably asked a girl for her phone number a few years ago. So on I Y Y oh my gosh, I still can't say it. I Y Pulse Monday, we will be talking about guns on full auto. Nice. On, yeah, that's that's our first segment. We're going to be talking guns. We're actually going to be talking. A lot of times we're talking guns. Today we're talking about gun legislation. And then oh, no. and then we have iWorld where we're going to talk about some of the headlines that you might not be uh, fully uh, following because it's not in the mainstream news. And we're going to end with iPrepper. So we always try to end all of these shows on something that's positive, that's constructive, that's forward action thinking. So I prepper is about being prepared, right? Because it's prep and then it's prepared. And we're going to get to our first segment. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to enter a gun-filled zone. Don't let yourself be triggered by the sound of full auto news about guns for gun supporters. Had to get those last gunshots in there. For all of you uh, gun-grabbing snowflakes out there, I hope you all just went fetal listening to that. (laughs) And you know what? That wasn't even bump fire. That was full auto, baby. You know what I'm saying? Well, was it intentional? Don't allow yourself to be triggered. (laughs) Yeah, that was absolutely... (laughs) That was triggered. I mean, that was intentional. That was... Everything about that was was fully and completely intentional. We're going to get to our first story. That's right, folks. We're finally getting to our first story Yay. 30 minutes into the show. Well, it's not really 30 minutes, but we're talking National Concealed Carry Reciprocity Bill. You excited? You excited about the National Concealed Carry Reciprocity Bill that passed the House? You excited? On the surface, on the, the surface, idea re- the idea of reciprocity is Sounds tremendous. Great. Yeah, I mean it's great on, on when I, su- yeah, when I think about you know people that have guns that are legal for them to have on their person, you know, the government decides we'll let you have this. That's nice of them, and you're not thinking or whatever. You're driving through a state and you forget, and you go, anybody who knows. Anybody who carries regularly knows it's easy for you to, you just carry. It's just there. You don't even think about it. And you're driving along, and then you're going to go to the next state. Mm. You get pulled over, and they check you. And guess what? All of a sudden, you're potentially going to go to prison for five years, ten years, whatever draconian uh, laws they have on the books in that particular state. So they're going to kidnap you at gunpoint. They're going to throw you in a cage, and they're going to separate you and your family because you have in your possession a tool for self-defense. So on the surface, the National Concealed Carry Reciprocity Bill? Not only do you have a tool for self-defense, but you you are um, well within your right to be armed, uh, as stated within the Second Amendment. So why would any American citizen fear carrying a firearm legally from one state to the other? Well, if this is the land of the rule of law, that would be pretty 
pretty true, right? I mean, it's like yeah. right there. Now, yeah. you know, you shall not infringe. Pretty clear. Shall not infringe. But apparently that's not the case. And even just recently, the Supreme Court was like, psych your mind. Oh, that whole Maryland passing assault weapon ban thingies. Yeah, we're not even going to hear that case. That's fine with us. It's totally fine. The Supreme Court, totally fine with a lower court that ruled that, yeah, yeah, Maryland can do that. You know, that whole shall not infringe thing. It's funny. I don't think rule of law worked in that particular instance. It seems something else is at play. Maybe power, maybe power is at play. But it, But this legislation, for those of you that are following along, it's got a little something something in it that goes well you know it's hard for congress just to pass a clean bill that just deals with hey we're just going to do this you know what look Ooh, you on the surface of it it is a beautiful shiny wooden horse just beautifully crafted oh, isn't a it? gift to yep. all gun owners yep um it's got and three alien this, holsters hanging off of it. It's gorgeous. <laughs> right. Shiny, gold-clad and all. It is a tribute to your horse culture. So we'll it just is. bring it on through the gates because yeah. nothing Embrace could it. go wrong here. Right. Nothing. But, you know, they thought, you know, I mean, we're going to write a bill. We're going to pass a bill. I mean... Why not add some to it? Something innocent. You know, a little NICS, a little NIX. You know, just a little tiny little NIX. That's the National Instant Crim Criminal Background Check System. I don't know why it is that they just, I guess, they, I guess they call it the National Instant Check System, but it's really the, I guess, NICBCS didn't quite scan. So they went with NICS, NIX. That's a... It's, well, let's just say there's something more to it. What do you, what do you know about this, this next part of this? Lovely. Not that much. All I know is it doesn't belong there. And it is, it is truly a Trojan horse. It is so vaguely written that um, any district attorney can interpret it any way they please. And if you have someone who is pro second amendment they'll interpret it one way god forbid you get somebody in there like the last administration and they're going to interpret it in their way and as they start to impose their will and power with these ambiguous statements or uh um, this ambiguous law they're introducing uh their interpretation is probably going to stick because everyone on the right seems to be spineless and yeah, they do seem to have reduced spineage at the very least. If they're I, not spineless, they're, we are talking reduced spineage significantly. I, I received a phone call at work today by an institution that in the past I gave money to because they purported to be pro-Second Amendment. And they were asking for a contribution to help to advance uh, the reciprocity law in its current form. And I said, in its have current you read form. Yeah. I said, have you read it in its current form? I mean, I haven't really dug into it in depth. I just know enough to say, yeah, uh, we're being snookered. We're being given candy and in the core is a bitter pill. Um, and I told the young man who was there trying to collect, uh, more funds to counter the anti-gun people's, you know, PR campaigns that are going to be on the air. And I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? Did you, did you actually read it? You, you might want to just Google, uh, national reciprocity and, um, Trojan horse and see what comes up. And what comes up is not particularly um, appealing to people like me. Yeah, I'm going to highlight a specific part of that. Go, go, go. Would you like to hear the specific part that I'm going to highlight? 
Go. Seems go, like go. As, as part of this NICS uh, revision or update, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, the committee approved something called the Traffic Ticket Gun Ban. That's going to be part of this. That's part of the NICS upgrade. And uh, what this what this would do is add, uh, and this is from Gun Owners America. This is the statement from Gun Owners America. I'm going to read from Gun Owners America. And by the way, if you're going to support anyone, support Gun Owners America before you support the NRA. They have been far more consistent than the NRA. When they were talking bump stock ban and all that, they they never solicited the ATF to consider regulating bump stocks. NRA did. Gun Owners of America did not. So if you're going to support anyone, I, I highly recommend them. And no, I'm not being paid. And they have not supported this show in any way, shape, or form. Although I, I would wish, totally, I wish. Oh yeah, <laughs> I yeah. would accept. Uh, dude, I, if, if you want to pay me, yeah, I'll take yeah. it. <laughs> it's like that's an easy sell for me. It's like, yeah, Gun Owners America, sure, why not? So what they said was, this deceptive legislation would add hundreds of thousands of additional names into the NICS system, thus blocking thousands of lawful gun owners from purchasing guns for offenses as slight as unpaid traffic tickets. Not only that, it would lay the groundwork for an anti-gun administration to troll every government and health and welfare program for the purpose of imposing gun bans on recipients with PTSD, ADHD, and Alzheimer's. The latter would jeopardize the inheritance of many valuable gun collections. The Obama administration already tried to do this with his Social Security disability, and in the future, uh, there may not be a pro-gun Congress to disapprove similar moves or pro-gun precedent to sign it. See, the devil is in the details, and in this case, the details are the regulations. So the 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 goal here from the left, from the gun, I'll just say from the gun grabbers, because some of the so-called people on the right are also gun grabbers. The goal of the gun grabbers is to introduce language into regulations that is broad and general, I guess that's re redundant, that will allow a gun grabber to interpret it in a way that will justify them going after more folks with guns. And no, that they don't need to send out an army to go confiscate all your guns. They don't need to do that. You think about, I, I brought this up recently with somebody, actually it was you, earlier today. We were talking about they pass these gun laws, and they say suddenly guns that you have are no longer legal, or you suddenly fit into a category where you're suddenly not allowed to have guns. And yeah, you could say, come and get them. And if they put enough people in that category, they're not going to go and try and come and get them because they couldn't realistically do that. It's just not going to happen. But what happens when you have to use that gun? You essentially have a have a toy now because the minute that you use that gun in a situation where you're actually defending yourself, if now if you just use it to, you know, intimidate someone and nothing happens, you'll probably be fine. Probably not, not, not definitely. But if you if you use that gun in self-defense and someone else gets harmed from the gun that you used, all of a sudden, yeah, it ain't over. Yeah, your gun defended you right then and there. But guess what? That's when Johnny Law comes around and says, yo, dude, uh, you know, code 3C4G, what's up with that gun? Dude. And then you hammered. So it puts a whole lot of people in this category that they have to take a tremendous risk just to use their gun for what they intended to use it for, which is self-defense. For an unpaid traffic ticket. Seriously? For an unpaid traffic ticket. Yeah. Something that could easily be missed. That you're you're gonna lose your 
Second Amendment rights for I don't care. A I don't care if violation. you knowingly didn't pay a traffic ticket. It has nothing, nothing whatsoever to do with your right to self defense. That's like you know, what, what, what other kind of well, uh, well, let me you, you don't you. pay your what, taxes. What's the, first, what's the First Amendment say? Can you f refresh everyone's memory? Are you talking about so if, uh, the first freedom amendment? of speech, right to assemble? Yeah. What well, are you... hey. Well, you didn't pay a traffic ticket? Well, then you don't have the right to freedom of speech. Why not impose that on every yeah. constitutional right and an amendment? Yeah, and, and we now know oh, there's, a, there's a hate speech thing, so we know that speech is every bit as deadly as guns now, right? Well, I'm just saying that there's an inconsistency that even the no, right... No, I'm following your logic. ...that even the right seems to say, oh, there was a shooting and people got hurt. Yeah, well, dude, more people got hurt with hammers last year than with, with assault rifles. So no. um, if you have an unpaid traffic ticket, we need to collect your hammers because they're very dangerous. And you no, could what hurt the folk, somebody. No, what the folks on the right say, and I want to say the leadership, the your political leaders on the right, what they say is, well, oh, look at the polls. We gotta, we gotta offer them something, you know. It's better for us just to give a little bit now because, you know, if we don't, they're gonna turn on us. You know, we're supposed to be uh, ostensibly a representational republic, not a democracy. That means it doesn't really matter if 90% of the people favor confiscating guns in a republic with a defined code of rights. That's that's not supposed to happen in a republic with this type of rule of law, unless of course it's not really a republic, in which case you screwed. I'm, I'm thinking and it's not really screwed. it's not really about rule of law. No, it's and still you know about that. rule of power. Yeah, I'm just yeah. playing the devil's advocate. I'm just walking this out here. So the bottom line is, you guys, uh, you got a you got a big old fat poison pill and. You know, I mean, how many of us, when we do our travel plans, we go and we figure out, okay, where will I be a felon and where will I not be a felon? And you calculate. and You're like, okay, what's my risk if I do this? What's my risk if I do that? You do those well, calculations. But it, and you'd but, love you to know, see that I world like end. To, I would love to invite those who prefer to conceal carry and are pro second amendment to vacation where people like you and to spend money where people like you respect the same things. For instance, I try not to um, visit New Jersey because they're, they're it's very bit, unfriendly. You're, you're putting yourself significantly at risk going to Jersey. Well, I'm not going to conceal. Yeah. I'm not going to conceal carry in New Jersey. You know no. why? Because I'm not going to New Jersey. You know where I'm going to go? I'm going to go to Florida, where the state that I live in already has reciprocity with them. I'm going to go to Georgia. I'm going to go to some of the Carolinas and possibly Virginia. They have magnificent coasts and places to vacation. And I can conceal carry there. So yeah. why, would I, why would I waste my time with New Jersey? I would like to invite everybody who carries not to go to New Jersey. If caring is important to you, why would you spend your money in a state that is run by people who are openly hostile to the Second Amendment and who are trying to shut down the Second Amendment? Spend your money where you where you where people are more like you and believe like you. Yeah, uh, Jacob Labelle said, uh, "Let's regulate ladders. People suffering from the intoxication of power." should be protected from liners. I think that's a good point. I think that's got to be added into this legislation. Uh, but back to the New Jersey thing. Last, this last summer, my wife was suggesting that we go to the shores of Jersey. I forget which place. And I said, no, 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 no. I am not going in Jersey. I went into Jersey uh, last summer because I had to for a personal reason i had to do it but it's like i had to and did i take my gun with me no no i did not because i understood if i took my gun with me and i had to use it 
even if I protected myself at that moment in time, afterwards, I would be proverbial, if you know what I'm saying. The big old, the sixth letter of the alphabet begins with F. <laughs> oh, and it sounds like cluck? It sounds like cluck. It certainly yeah, cluck. sounds like one. cluck. I could count. Thank you. You, but yeah, but it well, took you a little while. You're like, it wait, did. Wait, it most certainly did. Be. So recently, I um, I was on a trip, not, yeah, not one were. that I wanted to make. Yeah. Um, and uh, I got to meet people from outside the United States, and I had some very good conversations. And although this had been ringing in my head for quite some time, it really struck me in the conversations that I had with people about how different America is culturally from, let's say, Europe. And But one thing that Europe and the United States both have um, is the fact that the people that govern over us are not butchers and bakers and candlestick makers. They are all trained lawyers. Yep. And what is the primary thing that lawyers are taught to do? Obfuscate. Um, well, <laughs> well, yes. Obfuscate, um, yes. Um, Obfuscate in a way that sounds like legally it would pass. So they're they're masters of a particular uh, dialect of English in America. That is, uh, well, so in America they're masters of the particular dialect of law within English. That's what they are. Yeah, but they're trained essentially. If you get to the down to the base of things, they're trained to lie in order to protect their client. Obfuscate. I mean, yeah. So these are the people that we put in positions of power, trained liars, right? So what do we expect to see from them when they're in power? They're going to revert back to their training. And so we would be better off. This goes back to the issue we have with the Republican Party. They, they don't have a backbone because half of these people – don't really believe in what they've signed up for. They took that position. It's a marketing so decision. Get, correct. They took that position. To, uh, they took that political position to see if they could advance themselves um, and to be elected. And, well, the ones that were elected succeeded. So they took a position and were successful at it. But it's first and foremost a marketing decision not a what's the word i'm looking for not ethics it, but it's 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 not based on no, it's not a moral calling i'm not going to say that it's true of all of them i think there might be i said half i said oh, half I would, i'd say like 90 percent. <laughs> i think you're being generous but maybe 10 percent are like and and of the 10 percent, how many of them you know, when they start out and they say, you know what, man, I'm going to get up there, I'm going to change the system, I'm going to live my ideals, and then they get up there and they're hanging out with the people and they realize, dude, they got cool parties here. You want to go to those parties? I would like to go to those parties. Okay, My well, wife, then, she gonna... really wants to go to your party. Yeah. Yeah, Frank, why don't you vote like they tell you to do it? We never get invited to the cool parties. Okay, and then Frank, or or the other way around, you know, if it's the wife that's the congressman, congresswoman, then the, Francine, the, uh, then Francine, that would be Francine. Then, Francine, why don't you vote like they tell them? Frank, did you touch me without my consent? <laughs> I sure did. <laughs> but we're I married. sure did. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna hit another story here, which is related to what you just said, lying. So have you heard the old saying that goes like this? How do you know a politician is lying? His, his lips are moving. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's make sure the his becomes a he and a she because we want to be 
you know, all inclusive and, and, and any gender, whatever you want to call yourselves. Okay, Can we all just of say it. shiz? No, no. Shiz. Let's make sure that the his becomes a he and a she and anything else. Shiz. And and let's add tweets to the equation. So now we're going to say, Shwits. how do you know when a politician is lying? They tweet. And Nancy Pelosi, yeah, she lived this out. And she's talking about this bill, <coughs> the National Reciprocity Bill. And and, and she, I'm sure she likes the NICS part. She doesn't like the... the why she, is it called... Why is it called the fix nicks? Is is it that they're trying to fix the original NIC they're, Act? They're, they're calling it fix nicks because they're trying to get you to believe that all they're doing is just tweaking it. They're not making any fundamental changes. They just want to make sure it works right. You know, because of what happened with the Houston dude where the Air Force didn't report the way the law was there for the Air Force to do the reporting through nicks and it didn't. So it's like, wait a second, the law exists. So now you want to pass another law to fix the to law, fix the law that work. wasn't broken in the first place. The problem was just, okay, whatever. But Nancy Pelosi, Pelosi, Pelosi. That's that's about right. Pelo. Nancy Poopsy, Nancy Poopsy, yeah. Nancy Poopsy. She's Poopsy now. Nancy Poopsy. That's a real grown up thing, isn't it? She no. tweeted, inviting violent criminals to carry concealed weapons doesn't save lives. Inviting domestic abusers to carry concealed weapons doesn't save lives. Inviting convicted stalkers to carry concealed weapons doesn't save lives. And she's right, except... <laughs> National Reciprocity Act does nothing like that. It it doesn't suddenly allow people to legally get guns that could not get guns before this act. It has absolutely nothing to do with that. So Nancy is essentially tweeting fake news here, dude. Serious. I have a serious question. Serious question. fake news. Go ahead. I have a serious question. That woman... Did she make a deal with the devil to like live this long and be in Congress for this long? I think she's there, really like, like two hundred twelve years old. There's like, there's something like, is she drinking the blood of virgins or something? Like, I, 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 I that would be why one. Why can't we if, get rid of her? Honestly, if you found out that she was drinking the blood of virgins to live as long as she has, then you found out she was really two hundred and twelve years old. I, I would like. Yeah, not. Can, that's not really extraordinary news, there, bub. I mean, I not that I knew that, but I'm just no, saying. But, but you know who would go to jail? The guy who drove the stake through her heart to put an end to that. He would be a murderer. He'd be like anti-vampire. You know? He'd wow! Be like vampire lives matter. So see? it would be so LGBTQ blah 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 V. 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 <laughs> Oh, I like it. So she's essentially tweeting fake news, and I'm wondering why the head of Twitter isn't being hauled before Congress for allowing this fake news to propagate on their site. I mean, because there's a double standard, obviously. Yeah, you think about it. Nancy Pelosi's fake news tweet, drumming people up, whipping people to a frenzy to try to convince their Congress members to to not lengthen the leash on the rest of us just a little bit so maybe people don't end up being thrown in jail for five to ten years because they went into the wrong state carrying a gun. That, to me, is far more damaging and far more a risk to democracy than anything the Russians did, whether they did anything or not. She's, she's, she's a fundamental threat to the democratic institutions and and she there ought to Whoa. be a law the pelosi there ought to be a Whoa. pelosi tweet law Dude. no more pelosi tweets and if you the democratic know it, institutions died a long time ago she's Dude, a dude threat I'm, come on i'm just freaking corpse dude i'm just come oh, on i'm sorry sorry you know did what i ruin I'm that doing? 
to I'm just doing that, it because this is their language. This is the language that they're using to try to convince you that you should let the government come in and regulate social media. So by their logic, Nancy Pelosi should be banned. She should be banned from social media. They're not going to ban the likes of her. Well, I know that. Again, they're not I mean, going to. They're not going to ban the emotional outburst types. They're going to ban logic and reason. Nobody wants to hear logic and reason. You can't control logic and reason. You can control emotional twits. And she is well, like the prime, like leader of the emotional twits. She is the twitterian. She is uh, twitterian. Nancy Puposi. Nancy Puposi, the Twitterian. That's what she is. Congratulations, Nancy. You're now the Pelosi, the Twitterian. There you go. I would like to invite the vampire hunters to really check and see if she does come out into the light of day. Can you shove her into the sunlight, please? Please. Yeah. We're, we're going to go to our, our first break, and on the other side, we're going to talk well, first, we're going to talk about the World Trade Organization, and it's a little bit all upset because Donnie said mean things about them. And then Professor Rambo is going to talk about his favorite topic, which is... No, I'm going to move on. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Bang, we'll see. I, bet you, I bet you I'll get you there. We'll, we'll, see, you on the, we'll, we'll see you on the other side. Thank you, Dad. It's all fear and loathing in State Von State, Peace Land, but that does not need to be the case. What are the stories you're missing that might counter that fear and loathing? You'll find those stories and more at iState.tv, your home for news, views, podcasts, and more that exposes the reality of power and shares opportunities for tilting the balance of power towards individuals and free associations. Go to iState.tv now. Be sure to register on the site to get daily updates sent directly to your email. If you want to think outside the box, sometimes you have to wear outside the box. All of your outside the box threads can be found at agora.threadless.com. Go to agora.threadless.com and find the right outside the box threads to fit your outside the box head. That's agora.threadless.com. Go to the Agora and less. You are listening to iState.tv's iWire Pulse, your home for the edge of the pulse, where we expose the reality of power around you and the opportunity to change that reality to favor individuals and free associations. If you like this podcast, please be sure to go to pay.iState.tv and sign up to be a monthly iStater. And now, back to the show. You are listening to iWire Pulse Monday with Professor Rambo and Paul Gordon, featuring Full Auto, iWorld, and iPrepper. And now, here are your hosts, Professor Rambo and Paul Gordon. Yeah! You Can recognize that, that voice, don't you? What we're talking, dude? What? That is, that, that that's beat? a hot beat. <laughs> Very uh, Euro uh, techno of, like, the, like... It's Mid to a, late nineties. It's it's just a generic beat that I yeah, it's, b- but it's pretty hot. A little and drop some drop some special effecty things on it. Sorry, wow, that's <laughs> that was my wow. youth, man. That was well. I don't want to. I don't want to relive your youth if it's youth if it sounded like that. Very inappropriate. Problematic. That's problematic. That's what that is. Look, it's all I'm going to say very problematic. Is, all I'm going to say is some fine Scandinavian girls like to dance to that. And I like to watch. Oh, gosh. We'll leave it at that. We'll like to leave it at that. I'm, uh, I have Professor Rambo on my show, he, and he is a co-host, but I do not endorse him. <laughs> just, no, you shouldn't. Just, you shouldn't no, endorse I, I the do, professor. I do not endorse. But I that do not reminds me of some, some fine... Fine times. We're gonna we're we're gonna do the bump for the wide world. Are you ready to hear? This is your first time this, hearing the I world bump. Yeah, Are you ready? This is my first. I'm a- 
What are the stories that more fully reveal the unfolding reality of power at a global level? Well, that's what iWorld is for, so get ready to look behind the global curtain to see who's really pulling the levers. Ooh. That's right. We're looking at, uh, and you guys can see, I got like the, who's pulling the Emerald the City Green. You can't see it, oh. but I've got the, uh, who's pulling the levers, dude? Tell me who's pulling the levers. Well, we're going to start with a story that I think really, well, there, it really goes to... Are you going to trigger me? I don't think I'm... Well, I might trigger you. So this is about the World Trade Organization. What? I love the World Trade Organization. We all love the World Trade Organization. We have to put that out there. Yeah. We receive my... lots and lots of money from them to produce I welcome, this. I welcome my World Trade Organization overlords. <laughs> I just wanted to say that just in case they win, you know, just in case. Well, it they, is a democracy. Yeah. It is well, a it democracy. Is, no, it's a representational republic with rule of law, so we're safe. They're fine. They can't touch us. Okay. Man, they're, okay. they're like, they're going to arrive on our shorts. Like, we got guns. We got tanks. We got central banks. Oh, no, rule of law. Get out of here, guys. They got rule of law. Run, run. That's probably not going to happen. So the World Trade Organization is bristling under the Trump assault. And, and it, I love this. I love what Trump is doing here. And they're, and they're making it clear how they feel about that in their meeting in Buenos Aires. I'm going to read. This is from Anka.com. Wait. Wait. Buenos Aires. What, what Buenos country Aires, is that in? Argentina. Oh, Argentina. They're meeting in Argentina. Oh, that's lovely. Yes. So the Trump administration has made... This is... Okay, this is... I didn't write this part. This is from com. By the way, if you go to iState.tv, you'll see on the front of the site, you'll see uh, a link to the show that is called Drink This Poison for the Freedom to Carry Guns. That has all the notes that we're doing here, all the all the stories that we're going to cover, as well as a whole bunch of other stories that we're certainly not even going to get to. Like even the full auto section, we got to, I think it was uh, two stories out of a potential five stories. So there's plenty of other juicy stories for you to 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 mangle over there. So this is this is from Inca.com. The Trump administration has made the WTO a preferred target of its America First policy, threatening to pull the U.S. out of the trade organization it says it's hamper is hampering its ability to compete. I kind of agree. Wait, I, compete with what? Well, with the World Trade Organization. <laughs> Wait, who's competing with the World Trade Organization? The United States. Oh. Well, Wait, the WTS I thought we were members of. I thought we were members of, we're, we're members we're, of it. We're kind of, kind, kind of. So, so they're they're really hurt, and they're like, Trump has already withdrawn the United States from the Trans-Pacific Partnership, and insisted on renegotiating the North American Free Trade Agreement with Mexico and Canada. They didn't say it like that. I actually did a Canadian accent there. I don't know how I did that. I fell into it. Uh, so the WTO director general, oh, the, the director general. Okay, never mind. I thought it was WTO director, comma, general. That would have been cool and scary, but cool. Uh, but it, no, it's their director general, Roberto Azevedo said Sunday he will ask U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer for political commitment, political will, and flexibility. Would you like me to ungov that speech just now? Would you like that? Would you like the ungov version of what he sure. just said? Take it, take it, take it, and like it, and like it. That's, that's the ungov version of that. Can I have some Vaseline? You don't need no Vaseline! That's the ungov version. Dude, that's that, very right? embarrassing. Embarrassing. 
What's embarrassing? I do not. I do not endorse the statements that Paul <laughs> makes on this show. I'd like to make that very clear. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking it's, about. We're talking about trading Vaseline. I don't know what you're yeah, thinking of. He's Inappropriate. Man rape. It's kind of and problematic. Would, it's problematic yeah, what road you're going. I cannot on. endorse that. Yeah, it's very problematic. <laughs> so, so then he added, without flexibility. We will not get anywhere. Again, ungoving. If you don't take it, if you don't take it high and like it, we're screwed. And we don't want to be screwed. We want to screw you. So that's the problem. So Washington has... That's a big has, problem. When a, you're the really screwer who, who now has to be the screwed... You don't want to be the screwy. That's, 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 yeah, that's, that's a problem. You're used to a when role. Yo... You can't like my one of my favorite bands say you can't be a prostitute and a pimp too. That's you're either no. the prostitute or the pimp, and these guys are used to pimping. Yeah, they're used to being the pimpers, and now and Donald now, is like, yeah. Th- these are some of the reasons that I wonder how long Donald is going to last. These are some I mean, of the reasons I wonder how long this show is going to last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, WTO. Here's what we're talking about. And all of a sudden. <laughs> That's shut her down. Yeah. Shut her down. So Washington has been blamed for blocking appointments of judges to the WTO's dispute judges. settlement system. Wait, oh, I love that. Wait, 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 I love wait. that. Wait, they're being shut appointed. it down. They're being appointed. Uh, I don't know how well, the system works, but judges. apparently judges are appointed to the WPO. But but apparently Trump, the Trump administration, has been blocking appointments. But there's another story that I'm going to be talking about in more depth on I Wire Pulse Wednesday about Trump possibly doing things that kind of makes it look like maybe, possibly, he's kind of working to undermine the Federal Reserve. Wouldn't mind if well, that happened. Well, let's see. Look, I wish the man well in that endeavor, but I fear that his brains might find their way outside of his skull. They may negotiate an alternative path yeah. that will disconnect them from the current user. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, uh, it's not something a, I'm wishing. I don't want that, that to happen. That is a serious no. On the contrary, uh, I actually am sincere when I say I wish him well in taking on that, establish- that institution, but... Um, I don't think the powers that truly govern are going to allow that move to to take place without having him removed from the seat of power. See, I think if it was just the powers that Trump, first off, he never would have been elected. And second off, uh, if he was elected somehow, he, he would have been gone by now. So I'm thinking that there is right now no the powers. I believe that there are powerful families that are looking around and saying, you know, I think I think we can manage this human cattle a little bit better than we have. And uh, I, I think we should go with a more laissez-faire approach. And that those families are pushing for that approach. That's my theory. So you think you think he has some support among the circles he has some of support governance? Among among truly among the owners and managers of of what you call the United States of America the which it's a course of association but yeah i i'm i'm pr- i'm pretty convinced that he isn't out there by himself there are very very powerful families families that are used to be part of, of the decision making process that for one reason or another have decided to to shift approach and Another group of families are saying, no, 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 no. We don't want to shift. And I, I'm, I'm thinking that the Trump camp is, is maybe they're kind of looking around and seeing, you know, keeping these folks contained on such a short leash is going to be harder and harder. And if you keep trying to do that, if you keep trying to keep them on that short leash and technology is developing the way that it is, they're going to snap your hand off. But 
if you if you can back off and give them a longer leash, a much longer leash, they're going to stay with you. You're still going to get the benefits of having this large group of people pretty much funding your lifestyle. But you got to back off. You got to let them have space. If you do it now and give them space, they're not going to they're not going to leave their pens. They're going to be content and we're going to continue to benefit from them. And the other guys, I think, are saying, no, 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 no. We need to go tighter. We need to pull the leash in even more. We can stop this technology revolution thing from happening. That's my theory. I don't know. There's so much I don't know that I'd have to say my, my, my certainty in that theory is maybe 60%. Based on my understanding of the world today, that's... That's where I'm at. So so we'll just go to the next story. Do you have any updates for us on Turkey? Yes. Okay. I um I roasted it to about 170. Oh, degrees, that's and it you, was you delicious. folks don't know. This guy delicious. freaking lying to you. He's got turkey in his brain. I do, because okay, every... I stuffed it with smoked ham. No, the country smoked, turkey. Uh, yeah, we'll get He's a to big that. fan. He loves turkey. Dude. Big fan. Roots I for him all the time. I stuffed my turkey with smoked ham. Oh, and that I sounds used good, actually. roasted <laughs> garlic, a, a recipe my dad used to do. That we actually sounds delicious. We brined it for a week. And when I cut into it, I used the, the smoked ham as the stuffing. <laughs> People were like... What is I don't know. This? I think my head would just explode from joy. Yeah, I'd be yeah. like, I've been cutting into it like, oh, yes, turkey. <gasps> Stuffing is smoke. smoke. Yeah. Okay. Poof. Dude, my <laughs> eyes are tearing. I die happy, I wanna, though. I want to do that turkey again. And I poked holes in the whole turkey. And Are you and married? Filled I am. And oh. I filled the little holes with garlic. I was thinking so, about divorcing uh, my wife and marrying you. The gravy that came off of this thing. We're still eating the gravy. Oh, man. That and sounds... I, that's... I cut the gravy with burgundy wine and, and cooked it in the pan and then <sighs> thickened it with my buttered roux. Yo, that gravy on bread, on toasted Italian bread, is a meal. That was, it's just roasted turkey. The world will benefit from a good roasted turkey. Oh, wait, sorry. Now, I'm, now, you, I'm now we're bringing it back turkeys. to the world. We're bringing it back to Turkey. Yes. Do you have any news about the, the, the country of Turkey that the, you think is well, it's not something we should be paying attention turkey. to? They're, I'm the leading the witness, folks. The Dardanelles have been an important part of geopolitics for 3,000 years. Yes. Um, and uh, the center of commerce for most of Europe and the Middle East uh, for almost as long. Um, what happens there will have a huge effect on what happens in the rest of the world. That part of the world is extraordinarily important. To, even to the United States, that's why we are. That's why we have uh, our fleet in the Mediterranean. That's why we're looking for naval bases throughout the Mediterranean constantly. That's why we're shifting alliances to, and by we I mean the United States, um, to stabilize that region and make it safe for commerce. Uh, but lately, there have been some huge geostrategic shifts in the area. And you can say thank you, Mr. Obama, for the Arab Spring because that kicked off some serious stuff. Oh, yeah. And you're welcome, Paul. I am watching my language. <clears throat> I know. I appreciate yeah. it. You haven't – I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> yeah. I'm working hard. So I, I was working hard, too. I had my moments. So, so now I'm with you. There – there's just so much going on. Uh, I read today that uh, the country of Turkey it has finalized the agreement with Russia to pick up, to purchase 
their most sophisticated anti uh aircraft system um it's 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 more than that because it's uh they call it the s four hundred meaning it's a four hundred kilometer uh strike zone and it uses three different types of missiles to shoot down anything from an airplane to a drone to a cruise missile um and the fact that the Turks are buying this system from the Russians does not bode well for NATO, but worse off, it does not bode well for Israel. Why Why not Israel? Well, because it's within striking range of Israel. I mean, the Turks can lob missiles and knock down Israeli planes in Israel from within the borders of Turkey. Uh, they are well within the 400-kilometer uh, radius of this thing. So, yeah. yeah, and it also signals a significant shift in how huge. Turkey is viewing its place in the world. It's and how it's not looking to the west right now. I'll tell you that. No, and how it's viewing and how the rest of the world is viewing Turkey. Turkey was a stable ally of NATO for as long as the Soviet Union uh, existed. But the thing to learn, know about the Turks is that they've had a patron. I mean, before the the United States was their patron in NATO, it was the Germans in World War One. Before the Germans in World War One, it was the Arab uh, caliphates. Before the caliphates, it was uh, other groups. And I mean, how far back in history do you want to go? But they've they're smart as a as a group that they've had patrons and they, they don't rely on just themselves to advance their cause. They're smart politically. They, they've played it right. And in the 20th century, they used NATO and Israel uh, after the Germans, the German debacle in World War I. So they had pretty stable, reliable partners to prop them up. They've turned away from those patrons so if history is going to repeat itself and they're looking for a new patron, buying a missile defense system that is not integratable into the West's systems sends – it's not a message that, hey, we might be going a different way. It's, hey, we're going a different way. Yeah, and what's uh, more is at first NATO chafed at it. And now NATO is like, meh, whatever. It's, no. So what does that tell you? No, N NATO is, hey, there's going to be consequences for this. Oh, now, I thought that that had changed recently. I thought they had new, been like... No, 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 no. The, the Kurdish question gets wrapped up in all of this, as does the fact that Israel, Cyprus, and Greece are now working together on exploring for natural we gas and oil in the Mediterranean. Sorry Say what? About that. Oh. I thought I had I had my volumes turned all the way down on my phone because I can do stuff on my phone. Say what I can now? Share this. So, um, Israel just announced that it's giving Greece and India uh, the right to explore, drill, and produce uh, natural gas and petroleum in its fields. Now, you say, well, what's the big deal with that? Well, Israel is cozying up to the Greeks and to the Indians. Why is that? Well, China and Russia have gone pro-Iran. Turkey is reoriented towards China and Russia. So now suddenly who's the Turkey... Natural, right. Who's the natural... Uh, who's the nemesis of China? India. Who's the nemesis of Turkey? Greece. Greece and the Israelis uh, have been working very closely lately, and the Israelis are the first and possibly the only country that actually has recognized an independent Kurdistan or has recognized the legitimacy of the vote for an independent Kurdistan that the Kurds made about a couple month or two ago. The geostrategic tectonic plates are shifting by thousands of miles, not inches, uh, yeah. in that part of the world. Yeah, and now Russia and um, Egypt have announced that Egypt will be 
um, or that Russia will be building nuclear p- power plants. Nuclear in power Egypt. plants, right? And, and in now exchange, the Russians, and in exchange, Russia will have an air force base in Egypt. Now the United States has some military presence in Egypt, I believe, still. So it would be strange. But they're they're beefing up their military presence in Greece, particularly on the island of Crete, which is smack dab center in the Mediterranean. Um, and in exchange, the Greeks are getting 123 F-16s that are going to be re- retrofitted to be able to get this. They're going to be Falcon. I believe they're called Falcon or V-Class. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Viper level F-16s, which is what Israel has currently. So they're getting top level F-16s, which is a new thing. Because they weren't before. Because, because these F-16s have a radar, a digital radar that can see out to about 75 miles. The current F-16s the Greeks have can see out to 12 miles. What that accomplishes is now these F-16s can see and target stealth airplanes. And, and on that note, that we're is gonna, huge. Well, on that note, we're going to get to our last break. And on the other the last, side. Right. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Nope. What, what do you, it's like we're almost an hour into the show already. We got to hit the <laughs> last segment. I prepper. Got to get uh, to I prepper. We're going to be talking mummies at the end of the world. That's what we're going to be talking. After we just talked about that delicious turkey and <laughs> smoke. Oh, gosh. Smoke. I did oh, it. gosh. I did a tur turhamkin. Turhamkin. Just a tur just a turham. You just did a turham. Yeah, turham. <laughs> yes. So we'll see you on the other side. When we get back to the other side, I prepper and uh, what are you gonna do in the end of the world about your meats? What? You haven't subscribed to iState.tv's YouTube channel? Are you insane? Get yourself over to u.istate.tv. That's you as in unique. And subscribe now to get all the latest video updates coming out of iState.tv. And since you're already there, you might as well hit that bell to get immediate notifications as soon as the video goes live. That's u.istate.tv. You as in unique. We'll meet you there at u.istate.tv. Where video meets the ice tape. If you want to think outside the box, sometimes you have to wear outside the box. All of your outside the box threads can be found at agora.threadless.com. Go to agora.threadless.com and find the right outside the box threads to fit your outside the box head. That's agora.threadless.com. Go to the Agora and less. You are listening to iState.tv's iWire Pulse, your home for the edge of the pulse, where we expose the reality of power around you and the opportunity to change that reality to favor individuals and free associations. If you like this podcast, please be sure to go to pay.istate.tv and sign up to be a monthly iStater. And now back to the show. You are listening to iWire Pulse Monday with Professor Rambo and Paul Gordon, featuring Full Auto, iWorld, and iPrepper. And now, here are your hosts, Professor Rambo and Paul Gordon. And we're back. iWire Pulse Monday. What are you doing there? You got the? to play that. You got to get that beat going. Oh, you got to get that. Get the. Turn the beat around. No, that ain't no turn the beat around. No, you got to do the, the, uh, oh, the, uh, this is the last segment. I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit the, while, go ahead, do your oomphs, and while you do it, I'm going to hit the eye prayer per bump. 
Be the power you hope to see, and that means being prepared to provide, as much as possible, yourself and your loved ones with basic necessities. Welcome to iPrepper. Get ready to be prepared. Ha! Get ready what? to be prepared. Why am I so itchy? Oh my I gosh, know. I think Why I'm allergic you? to my dogs. That You've had your dogs for a while. This we've had a, a interesting we had a time for you delay. to discover that. If we had a slight delay in getting the show on the road because my Akita started barking. He don't bark for nothing unless he's killing something. Yeah, he's by the way, at the window looking outside and barking. I'm like, oh shit, get the 12 gauge because something's kicking off. But and nothing by, kicked by, off. Yeah, by the way, uh, for I wire Mondays because of Professor Rambo's weird schedule realities, the show will air somewhere between 9 and 9.30. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday will be right at 9. Wednesday, Monday, be between 9 and 9.30. That's just the way it's got to be. Otherwise, we don't get Professor Rambo. All right, you're out of here. No. <laughs> yeah, dude. As soon as you replace me. As soon as you replace You can sleep on Mondays, Monday nights? Because when do you get up and start your day? Like 5 in the morning? Pretty early. Yeah. Pretty pretty. Pretty freaking early, yeah. So we're we're talking we're talking meats, dude. And this is uh, non meat protein source for your survival stockpile. So this is from where is this from, dude? Oh man, I didn't. I, I shared the link, but I usually I titled the site. Okay. So the site, I'm just going to click on it. I'm going to open it up and get the name of the site. Survivopedia. This is where we're looking at. Survivopedia. I love the sound of that. Survivopedia. That's pretty cool, man. It's pretty cool. That that could be the the, the name of a song of a of a track. Survivopedia. Survival. <laughs> oh yeah. You just wanted to get an excuse Sorry. to hit that drum beat. <laughs> So this is this is from Survivor Peter. First off, I'll look at the excerpt. Uh, most meat is what's called a complete protein. That is, it has all 20 amino, amino acids. Most non-meat sources aren't. But that doesn't mean you can't get all of them. You just have to eat more than one protein source. So another thing to consider and another reason why you should store backup non-meat protein sources is that meat isn't particularly portable. You can't just toss it in a rucksack and trek off with it unless, of course, your meat is living. And then it's only or freeze so dry. much. Yeah, you know, your meat is freeze living. Dry you is walk good. your dogs with you and you know eventually you're going to eat them. I'm just kidding. Hey, Buster. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to be a hero. You're, you're going to save guard us at night. For a few nights. Mm. <laughs> but nah, don't eat my doggo. But don't eat the liver. Don't eat the liver. Dog so livers there you go. Are, don't eat dog livers. You. There you go. Too high in vitamin A. So 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 he goes on to say you can't just toss it in a rucksack and trek off with it. Jerky sure, but even that only lasts for so long and it takes a lot of meat to make a little bit of jerky. Now that you know what you need to know nutritionally and logically, let's talk about some of the good protein sources. And so <clears throat> I on my site I just showed a couple things and then I'll click to the to their site. So powdered eggs. All you need to add to these is what milk? What well, well water or milk? Probably water is probably gonna be your your choice. But number two should be powdered milk. Okay. So there you go. So powdered you milk. Powdered, powdered eggs. eggs. Milk. Right. Powdered milk is outstanding because it's got high protein and fat. So he has he doesn't list powdered milk, but you're right. <clears throat> but I think he's looking for a combination of things that will replace the type of proteins that you get in meats. So one of those would be powdered eggs. So all you need to do is add water or or powdered milk. There you go. <laughs> and water. Add powdered milk. Add water. So add water to your powdered milk, and then add your powdered add milk a... to your powdered eggs. Correct. It's like a powder train going on. In I that like order. It. Right. 
in that order, definitely in that order. And then there's Quinoa. I don't even know what Quinoa. Well, tell me about Quinoa, Mr. Fuji. Quinoa. Quinoa. There, is it spelled Q-U-I-N-O-A? Is that Quinoa? It is a, it is a rare grain uh, from antiquity that is all the rage now in the food industry with the health-minded uh, middle-aged moms who are trying to stay fit and compete with 20-year-olds. Yeah, quinoa. There That's you go, quinoa. Okay. It's not a traditional food. It sounds exotic and mysterious, he says. It's like, it's like a little grain. It, it, uh, it boils up like pasta. It's technically a seed of a leafy plant, sort of like spinach, though most people think it's a grain. Like you. It's like a grain. I didn't say it was a grain. Oh, okay. Okay. Like okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I thought I caught Mr. Foodie. Well, at least I know how to pronounce the word. <laughs> That's true. Hey, I'm not Mr. And Foodie. I'm the one, I don't yeah, and I'm the one to be. who has a, a heavy. Uh, uh, you don't have a heavy. You have no I heavy. Do. You don't. I have a heavy. You have no heavy. English is my second language. Yes, but you have no heavy. You're the you're the you're the you're the Smith of the I'm, English I'm, language. I'm, I'm I'm the Logadedalus. Yes. There you go. It, whatever so, that is. So it means a wordsmith, basically. So one cup has eight grams of protein, which doesn't compare to the forty-three grams you'll get out of the same amount of chicken, but it's still significant, especially considering. It's complete. I guess by complete, I mean a complete protein. It's also a good source of fiber and fat, and is packed with minerals that you don't get from many foods. But what's it taste like? A grain. A it grain. Tastes, so you're gonna need tastes, to. You're gonna need it, to it boom tastes, it up. Yeah, it's 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 not. It doesn't have a unique taste like uh, you know basmati rice. It's kind of a generic grain taste. It could be. It could be anything. I mean, I'm assuming they're ma they're grinding it up and making it into breads at this point. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, I've had it in granola and as a hot cereal, sort of like steel cut oats. You can also yes. pop it like popcorn. Uh, you can that also add know. it to salads for crunch. Cook it and season it up as a side dish, and use it to thicken stews or soups. That's probably a good so idea. Think of it. Think of it as like oh, couscous. One more thing. You could also grind it for flour too, though it would take more than what's really feasible. Right. So you can also serve it as couscous. So if you're familiar with couscous, it's a small I'm... pasta, um, and you can boil it. And it, it's got, it's very similar to couscous, except it has this little like white um, hair that comes off of it, or it's attached to it. You and said hair. I did. A white you little did. strand that's attached to it. A white little strand of hair. Yes. But it doesn't taste like hair. Doesn't. Nor does it smell like hair. I no. didn't know so the hair the next, had like a... the next one? Okay, the next the one is legumes? nuts and nut butters. Nuts so are nuts, great. Nuts are a great source of protein, almost as good as meat. And they're complete. Yeah. I didn't know that. That nuts Particularly are complete protein. Walnuts, walnuts so, are tremendous. Two stable tablespoons of peanut butter has 15 grams of protein. They are also high calorie and high fat, but a good portion of that fat is omega-3 fat. I don't know what yeah. that means. What's that mean? That means that means those are the right kind of fat, good fats, fats your body needs. And so here here's the important part of this. The most important part of this is that your brain needs fat to function. So people who go on a fat-free diet start to suffer from ailments that affect the brain. Um, and it's very dangerous to cut all fats out of your diet. Uh, the kinds of fats that you find in fish and, and nuts actually help build brain. And in a survival situation where you need to be at your peak um, ability to reason, and to solve problems, uh, high fat content in nuts and avocados uh, are essential, 
especially if you're not going to be able to get fats from meats and fish uh, and other sources. So it's a double – it has two really good um, benefits. One, it's high in protein, and two, it's high in fats, the right kind of fats. So, And, and he also mentions here uh, – I'll just go through the, the, the last few little things here. There's beans and rice. Chia seeds. Beans are outstanding. And beans they and actually, rice is a great combo. And I like the taste of beans and rice. I want to – actually, we're trying to get more beans and rice dinners into our diet well, as opposed to if, meats. If you're trying to lose weight, beans and rice is ideal because you, you're consuming um, high protein. But if you're trying to sustain weight in, in a bad situation – Stay away from rice. Rice has a lower caloric. Well, this guy um, is saying since both are cake to store and last for practically ever if stored properly, there must have survival foods. Yeah, but but pastas, breads, uh, grains uh, from wheat and bulgur have higher uh, energy levels. Uh, they produce higher. Um, what do you call it? Higher BTUs in the human body than rice does rice Br british thermal units yes it, there's a reason why i don't Asian want british thermal who, units that's why we fought the revolutionary war to get british thermal units out of us okay higher caloric intake does that make you feel better feels better you triggered me okay. you triggered me dude so there's a reason why asians tend to be thinner because their primary carb is rice and rice has lower caloric output and for you to have lower caloric input so it's a good starch it's a healthier starch but especially if you're trying to lose weight but if you're trying to maintain your weight and increase your protein i would highly recommend going with oats and wheat and barley and rye we're talking about alternatives to meats correct you're, you're putting so that in that category okay the legume the legumes, legumes, all of the beans, are outstanding. And here's the best part of the beans. When you dry them, they last forever. So dried yeah, just beans what he said. They'll, and, they'll last forever. and chickpeas, you could store those pretty much forever. Uh, and the all, all you have to do to get them to cook them is soak them overnight so they start to soften up and rehydrate. And then you could cook them off. And whether you're making a chili or um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you can grind up chickpeas, and I am stuck for words. Yeah, it's not a surprise because, you know, English oh, is your God. seventh language. I make the stuff, and I love it. Uh, dried chickpeas with a little cumin and lemon juice. Mm. Yum, and you yum. smear that on bread. Good times. Good times. Oh. Anyway. Anyway. So legumes are outstanding. What else has he mentioned? That's it. That's all he has. That's it. That's all he's got. He doesn't That's talk all... about fish. He he. Well, fish. It's 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 fish. Is, you're talking about things that you know. Yeah, I think fish. Well, some fish, people would consider a meat. Some people would consider smoke? fish a meat. So he's talking about all non non fleshy items. Fish wouldn't. Well, he mentioned, crack. but he did mention beef jerky as requiring a lot of well he was only jerky. he was only pointing out the the limitations okay, yeah you could use jerky but the limits to jerky it doesn't last as long and it you know you, you it takes a lot of meat to create to a little bit of jerky that's the big right. side but but don't forget um that you can smoke haddock for instance Small salted smoked haddock yeah but again we're, we're going to stay away from the flesh things give us non-flesh yeah alternatives well for me i think the best two to go to are walnuts and legumes yeah, you can have complete Three meals hurt. with beans with beans and walnuts or oh, well all nuts in general but professor rambo has spoken it's yes it's legumes and walnuts legumes and nuts. legumes and nuts legumes beans and nuts Beans, beans and nuts. And nuts. We could have called this whole nuts. show Beans and Nuts. Wouldn't it be nice to have some beans and nuts? Okay. Wait, that I doesn't don't, sound right. I don't want to know. I don't want to know any more about your <laughs> beans and nuts life. It's, I don't. 
the, the less I know about your beans and nuts life, the better. We've reached the mm. end of our show, by the way. We've we have? reached the end, yeah. As a matter of fact, we're not necessarily always going to have shows this long. Sometimes we might, but generally we try to keep them around an hour, at least an hour. Sometimes they'll run a little late. This one ran a little late, and that's fine. But we're going to be back next Monday, Professor Rambo and I, right here on this channel. This is the Liberty Principle Facebook page, so please like the Liberty Principal Facebook page, and please visit iState.tv because I'm putting out content every day in addition to these, to these shows that we do. We do the shows Monday through Thursday. Today is iWire Pulse Monday where we have, we have guns, world news, and prepper stuff. And tomorrow we're going to be on with Bodie, Bodie Agora, a.k.a. Andrew Merritt, and we're going to be talking Lozilla. We're going to talk about Lozilla's basically weird news, strange stories. We get a bit of break from all the seriousness. Let's have some fun. Let's laugh at ourselves. And then we have a, a segment we call I Ponder, where we just talk about whatever whatever the big theory is on the Facebookeries and the Liberty community um, or whatever else comes to our mind. And we also have uh, at the end of that, dude, I think it's iScience. Yeah, we talk science. We talk weird scientific discoveries. Generally, scientific discoveries that are going to help people with I, liberty. I th I'm making it a scientific discovery now. When I look at you on the screen yes. and I look at my face in the periphery, I look like a hideous monster. True. And then when I look at me and look at your face in my periphery, you look like a hideous monster. That's not true. What's up with that? That's, that's not true at all. And then Wednesdays, we do we do mainstream type news headlines with Newsfire. That's with uh, the one true Niz, Niz. And we do, we do Newsfire. Then we do, oh, and then we do my favorite segment of all the shows that I do, of all the segments. No offense, Professor Rambo. There's nothing to do with the hosts. My favorite segment is the one on Wednesday, the second segment. It's Skynetter. We talk about dystopian tech, but then we follow it up with Liberty Tech. We talk about how tech is helping dystopian us. Dystopian tech. Dystopian tech. Skynetter. And then Thursday, I have Lou Sander of the Freedom Fiends. And uh, we, we have a little bit more open show on Thursdays. Then we talk about, we start with Shorter Leash, how our leash is being shortened. Longer leash, how our leash is being lengthened by the, the, good, the good care of uh, our benevolent masters. And then off the leash, getting off the leash altogether. So we'll see you. You'll see the, uh, Professor Rambo and I. You'll see us next Monday. Same, same bat channel, same, roughly same back time between 9 and 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But you'll see me with Bodie tomorrow for IYWire Pulse Tuesday. Be sure to stay tuned. Do you have any last remarks for our studio audience before we punch this puppy in the head and, and make this our first ever IYWire Pulse Monday show? So, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to say Kalinikta. Kalinikta, which means? Good night. Good night. There you go. Kalinikta. I, th I think it's Turkish, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's Greek. It's Greek. I'm just actually, kidding. if we're gonna get technical, Nichta Nicht is German, so we would say Kaliespera. 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 Okay. Don't mix your Greek and your German. Okay. Yeah. Just, well, not we are Greek. mixed. We are all of mixed heritage. So. Well, yeah, that's true. We're all mutts now. We're all mutts at this now. point. All right. With, with the with the DNA tests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're all much now. All right, we'll see you tomorrow, Tuesday. Me and Bodhi Agora, same time, same place, right here on the Liberty Principle page. Until then, do I have to come up with a closing? I Adios, still don't have amigos. a closing line. Say, gonna, gonna say something in Spanish. Adios. <laughs> How about hasta mañana, amigos? Hasta mañana, manigo! 
Wait. Hasta um, mañana, me. amigos! There you go. And goodbye.